Um, just, um, just thinking about the annual and five-year assessments, any, any advice? Um, a, a number of companies out there have, have embarked on that. Uh, a number have not. Any, any advice you would give uh, to, to audit committees to, you know, how do they embark on this? And I guess the sub part I'd like to also, you know, for if you're a smaller company, how do you deal with this? But let's, let's deal with the first one. Well, I think, I think the, uh, there's a number of tools that uh, CPA Canada, uh, ourselves, ICD, have uh, developed. Uh, that's a good starting point. Uh, get access to those tools. Those tools try and go through in a step-by-step -step fashion of how you would approach this. Um, you also need to access um, CPAP's public report, which under the protocol is being provided to all audit committees by the auditors. I would encourage people to look at those. Um, the findings that we have there, uh, to have the dialogue with the auditors in terms of things like professional skepticism is something that we uh, are very concerned about, is the lack of that in a number of audits. Um, you could ask your auditor to demonstrate or discuss with, around the risks that you've identified, as Jim's talked about in the, in the audit uh, plan. Uh, how did you demonstrate professional skepticism? What did you challenge in terms of management? And this isn't a challenge in terms of directly challenging uh, an assumption or assertion, but really, did you come at it in a different fashion and come up with the same conclusion within a reasonable period uh, or a reasonable um, um, spectrum of, of, of reasonableness. So I think you can, you can do a number of things. I mean, we have been working with a number of uh, firms that have embarked on this. Um, there is a fair amount of work to do. I think the, uh, the tools that we've provided are scalable uh, for a smaller entity. So I think you need to think about that. Um, for a large entity, um, after the work is done, we're estimating that um, it's probably an hour of meeting time to uh, go through uh, an annual review. It's probably two hours of meeting time uh, for a comprehensive review uh, every five years. Um, there is a lot of work uh, that leads up to that. We appreciate that. Uh, but I think it is scalable. And, you know, if you scale that down to a $50 million market cap uh, organization, um, maybe that's an hour of meeting time um, in terms of the five-year comprehensive review. So I don't think we're asking, we, we do recognize that audit committee agendas are jam-packed. They don't have a lot of time, but I think this is something that's really worthwhile doing. Patricia, your thoughts on, on this? I guess from the scalability, I would say, you know, if you're looking at smaller firms, is looking at the whole program and the tools, and I guess deciding with the management, with the auditors, with the, with the board in terms of touching on certain topics of first year, second year, third year, and there, you know, there's no expectation that everything can be done at the same time, and trying to identify the key elements and have a, I guess, a wholesome program that's feasible for probably the next two, three years. That, that would be, I guess, my way of, my takeaway in terms of how applicable it is for you know medium type of enterprises that don't want to entertain the, the one or two hours extra you know it's a it's always a burden for for a lot it has to be done but there's a lot of skepticism you know when you try and implement it so if you have something that's a little more expandable reasonable and acceptable I think it makes for a worthwhile exercise it, it is and we've been through um, uh, at our firm uh, annual and, and a five year and by the way there is considerable work uh, if you do a, a good five year so it does yeah. take time and yeah. effort um, the interesting thing is how to how to scale it and Jim you know you dealt with smaller cap like how, how do you how do you make it real in a small cap world well <clears throat> I think I think the the key here is that uh, you've got to embrace both management the auditors and the audit committee as you got to embrace the concept of continual improvement it's got to be a continual improvement exercise this is not a you know uh, it's not a uh, it's not a uh, um, a pass fail thing it's a continual improvement okay so if you embrace that then then annually you should be taking time, and then small cap, you don't need to have all of the structure. A big cap company, large cap company, well, you've got divisions, subsidiaries, foreign operations, can, you know, becomes a much more complex exercise. Small cap company, it's a more simple exercise because the operations are simple, more simple. Um, but it's the question of, you know, are, is, how can we get better? How can the auditors get better? How can management get better? Do we, are we embracing healthy skept, professional skepticism? Uh, and how can the audit add more value? 
I mean, we're spending a lot of money on auditing. You know, how can the audit add more value? Um, the, ben the shareholders are the beneficiaries of the audit. They're the ones who get the money. But the customer is the audit committee. So how does that audit resource, the, the audit resource, how can you enhance the value? Um, and how can you be get better? Uh, what are the things that management can do? How can you be more efficient? How can you be more productive? These are all good questions um, that, uh, that if you embrace the concept of continual improvement, then you'd be say you should be doing this every year. And then periodically, you should do the step back, and I would suggest, Don, the good time to do that periodic step back is when you have partner rotation. Because that's a good time, you have a new person coming in, good time to do the assessment, you know, uh, and what are the, then the goals for, for going forward. And that way I think we can continually to enhance both the productivity, the efficiency of the audit, but also to enhance its value. It's interesting around that point. I like the continuous improvement, Jim, uh, absolutely spot on, and, and the timing around partner rotation because I've seen that's when typically companies will actually do the five-year review, the full review, uh, thinking through it because there's a, a critical decision point where, what you want to do with the uh, audit relationship. Um, I'm going to just quickly change gears, and I really really just want a sound bite on this, but this, this new audit report that's, uh, that's coming out, and now they've done it in the U.K., you talk about materiality, you talk about the scope of the audit and the, you know, the audit of the critical areas. Uh, the report ranges from you know, the short end, which is probably the boilerplate, two pages to like seven. So there's going to be a lot more disclosure, risk of boilerplate. What, is this a, you know, a positive or, or, uh, or are there some challenges in, in this? And maybe Jim, I'll start with you and then Patricia and then, and then Brian, I'll let you just <laughs> close. Some quick reactions to where this is going because it, it does, it's gaining momentum. Uh, well, it's gaining momentum and it's coming because the uh, International Auditing Standards Board, uh, um, we were told at the symposium, has approved the standard. So get ready, it is coming to Canada. The question is, when does it come? Um, um, uh, um, we had a great presentation at the symposium uh, from the UK. Uh, we early adopted this. And I must admit, Don, I came to the symposium. Uh, uh, Sheila and I were the co-chairs uh, for the symposium, Sheila Fraser. And we came sort of somewhat skeptical and when we heard the, what the UK experience um, changed our mind and so I think we need to look at this it's going to change the dynamic though when you publicly put in the auditors report the highlights of the key audit risk areas a that'll be an information that'll be beneficial to the investor kind of thing but that's going to change the dynamic in between management between the auditors management and the audit committee so Everybody's going to have to be on site. It'll be new experience, but I think it's going to be worthwhile. If I could just add, add something back to that to point, uh, Jim. Investors have been asking for more information about the audit over the course of the past 10 years. We know that. We've, done, we've had uh, interaction with investors on that point. Uh, I think this is a positive trend. I, I think the question in my mind is what type of entities should produce this information for what type of investors? Is this something for all types of companies? The larger ones, the more sophisticated investors, I think will benefit. But there's a lot of small cap companies out there and will the investors really need to have a lot of this information? It's a question in my mind, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think there'll be a lot of discussion and debate. I, I, I actually saw uh, something from the UK director talking about it and they were talking about the simplification process and, 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 and clutter. And so they talked about it in terms of clutter. Potentially, so there's a lot of trade-offs uh, in terms of cost benefits. But as Jim points out, this is coming, so uh, so be ready and uh, and be thinking about the implications in terms of the the change dynamics in the boardroom uh, as well. 